<laughs> Hello, freak bitches. When you're on stage doing stand-up, it's almost like you're in a trance. Yeah. And then you're in this trance for the third time in the night. You're like, what am I talking about? Did I already say this? Yeah. Especially if you don't have a rigid... Um, uh, like set list yeah. of all the bits and how you're gonna say them and when, when you're gonna say them it can be a problem. Do you have like a cognitive stack you use for yes. shows? Yes, yeah, I do. Yeah, what I have a bunch that? of stuff. Um, one I really like this Neuro Gum. Okay. You, you, ever, you ever use that stuff? I think it rings a bell. We have some over here. We use it. It was a sponsor one point in time. I buy a lot of it on Amazon. And another stuff is one thing that my company on it makes. It's uh, Alpha Brain. This is the new one, Alpha Brain Black Label. Mm. I'll give you some of it. Awesome. Take it. Oh, I'll give you a fresh one. That's my bottle. Yeah, I actually formulate new tropics for my company too. So this stuff highly interests me. What do you use? What What are your uh, What's your stack that you formulate? Um, the company I have it's called Gorilla Mind, and the product is basically based around. Probably a lot of the same stuff, but cholinergics mainly. So mm -hmm. having acetylcholine. Yeah, so having alpha GPC, I find the most bioavailable form of choline that actually crosses the blood brain barrier. And then acetylcholinesterase inhibitors that inhibit the breakdown of acetylcholine. So you could use like huperzine as a good one. Right. And I have things like ginkgo, bacopa, stuff like that. And then dopamine precursors, I'd like to put in there too. And basically just have it so your brain is as mentally sharp, capable of retaining information. Uh, memory formation at its peak, all that kind of stuff. Is What's your product called? Gorilla Mind. Oh, it's called Gorilla Mind. Yeah. Um, so do you take this uh, before podcast, before you do your video podcast? Yeah, I take it pretty much every day. And you take it, what? like say if you want to do something and be at your peak, you take it an hour, two hours before? What's your... Um, For me, yeah, I'll usually do like an hour beforehand. Yeah. Ish. Yeah. Yes, I'll usually it. combine it with like some sort of stimulant, either just caffeine through... Um, you know, a coffee or an energy drink if I want, or, um, yeah, sometimes I use, uh, I have sleep apnea, so I've been prescribed modafinil for a long time too, which is, what have you done for your sleep apnea? CPAP. Oh man, those things suck, don't they? Uh, they're not very, like they're kind of annoying to have to wear, but I'm so used to it at this point that it's just part of my routine, but I have a mouthpiece that I wear that keeps my tongue from falling back. Like uh, a lot of the thick neck guys like you, yeah, yeah. And I, what happens is your tongue like falls back because you have all this extra tissue around your yeah. neck, so your tongue will fall back and cover your air hole. That's why you choke and snore real loud. Well, this tongue depressor, it's like a mouthpiece, and it holds my tongue down, so it keeps my airway open. Oh, nice. It's amazing. Yeah, I think uh, that's one of the most overlooked silent killers of muscular guys Yes. and fat people. Yep. Yeah, because yeah. you don't even know you're getting fucked up in your sleep yep. and you wake up and you just feel terrible like i used to go to university classes and sit there and not understand why i'd fall asleep after five minutes every day right and the you know the lecturer just thought i was a shitty student but in reality my sleep was just atrocious the entire time yeah and the cpap is a game changer for me because otherwise you know i was getting i don't know like i forget how many episodes of apneas i was having per hour but it was exorbitant to the point that i probably would be dead by now if i didn't get a cpap otherwise so when you got this machine did you struggle to sleep with it on your face for a while <laughs> well when you first start yeah because you're you're not used to something blowing air into your airway and yeah. strapped to your head so i'd often wake up and just be fucking like chucked across exactly. the room or whatever but some people they don't get used to it like they don't try to get used to it they just do it a couple nights and they say this thing sucks who wants this? And, you know, some single guys have this idea that girls are going to think it's weird and shit when you yeah. show up and you have the CPAP machine. Um, <laughs> I've, never had a, weird. I've never had an experience with that, though, personally. So when you go over a girl's house, you're going to spend the night, you bring, like, a vacuum cleaner with you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, too, is, like, it's kind of uh, presumptuous because if a chick, you can't really get around implying you think you're going to be staying at her place with a new chick if you have a fucking machine in your car <laughs> that blows air, you know? She's like, what's right. this thing for? Like, do you think that this is, like... Right, right, yeah. right. If she wants to snuggle and you're over there like Darth Vader... Yeah. But other, if you don't do that, then you're literally going to be choking in her face. Right, right, so right. So you yeah. pick. And yeah. one of them kills you quick and one of them keeps you alive. And how much of a difference did it make once you started using it? Night and day. Night and day. Yeah. Energy levels, yeah, everything. Yeah. Like yeah. I wore a pulse oximeter, and that's how you assess if you have sleep apnea or not. And if you are even like a, a healthy guy otherwise, and you're lean, even if you're fucking shredded, if you're a big guy, 
highly recommend a sleep study to anyone because it's yeah. something that even sometimes significant others, they may just think you're a horrible snorer. Right. And they think you're, they just go in another room maybe to get away from you and they just think that's how you sleep and you're just annoying and loud. But you might literally be dying in your sleep gasping for air. Like I used to wake up, sit up and gasp for air because I was literally at the point of about to pass out and my body wakes me up and makes me breathe. Yeah, I, I had been there too. Yeah. I remember I was on a plane once and um, – uh, there was a guy behind me. It was a long flight. I think it was an international flight. There was a guy behind me. He was a big guy, very overweight. And he was holding his breath, choking for like 15, 20 seconds at a time. So he's Damn. like laying back like. Yeah. And then um, he gets up. Eventually I go, hey, man. I go, do you know that you choke in your sleep? And he's like, what? Do yeah. I? What do you mean? I go. You have sleep apnea. Yeah. I go, listen to me. I have sleep apnea, too. You got to listen to me. You got to go to a doctor. I go, this is fucking you up. I go, you tired all the time? He's like, oh, my God, I'm tired all the time. I go, that's why. You're yeah. not getting any sleep. But it was wild to watch some. How often do you get to watch a guy sleep? You know? But yeah. on a plane, you watch people sleep. I recorded myself before I got diagnosed when I finally knew what this was. And I listened to the audio, and it was terrifying, dude. <laughs> yeah, you're just sitting there, and all of a sudden, you're like... Like, literally gasping. Yeah. Yeah. There's ways you can sleep where it's not as bad, right? Like, you sleep on your side. Or I always felt like one of those massage tables would be the move. Like, sleep with <laughs> so your you face. So you could lie on your face. Yeah. yeah sleep with I your can't, I, with the mask thing, I can't lie on my stomach like I used to because the thing will get pushed out of my airway. Right, right. So, so yeah, to, that might not be a bad idea. How do you lie? Sideways? On my back. On which your back. Which gets annoying because sometimes you want to roll on your side and then and you it can can't. be... You can, but it's like it some, knocks off your sometimes. Face. It, yeah, yeah. You, you could use the full face mask, which is pretty much impossible to knock off. But um, that makes like a bunch of lines on your face, and it encourages mouth breathing, which otherwise is there's like research that's come out that implies that's bad for performance and just longevity and whatnot. So yeah, mouth breathing is supposed to be bad for you. Yeah. Does your sleep apnea change if you if you breathe out of your nose? Um, like when I if I use a nose mask for a versus yeah. face one, yeah. No, the quality is the same because it's manually putting the amount of pressure I need to oxygenate me, but it encourages that subconscious mouth breathing mm. that otherwise carries into your day. So you use a, a nose one? Yeah. So what does it look like? Um, it's just like a big long tube that connects to the machine that's on the ground, and then it has this uh, just like a strap that goes on your head up here. It's a pretty thin strap here and here. It has these little nasal pillows that you just like put into your nose, and it's maybe like this big. And do you tape your mouth shut? I used to, but it's uh, the tape never like adhered properly to me. Me neither. Uh, it always yeah. fell off, and I always wondered like how the fuck does anyone use this stuff? I think it's a beard thing. Yeah, but I even when guess. I was clean shaven, it didn't work for me. Really? Yeah. Maybe try duct tape. Yeah, I, I was kids. <laughs> I actually okay. I actually use this thing now. I just remembered actually. It's called uh, it like, it, so I have the strap for the CPAP mask, which is the nose thing, and then I have another strap that goes around my chin to keep it locked. Oh, to keep your mouth shut. Yeah, because the uh, the tape wasn't working, so I looked for like a chin strap. How do those work? It just ties around your head, so you have a strap here, a strap yeah, here. Yeah, no, I know how it works. I mean, how like how effective is it? Very. Really? Yeah, and it's, I find it better than tape. Oh, so that's your move now. Chin strap, yeah. nose plug. Yeah, <laughs> so it's quite the fucking setup. <laughs> and it does it does look ridiculous. So I could see why some guys don't want to do it, especially, you know, around women, but ultimately, like, they'll understand if they like you enough, so. It changes your life, though, ultimately. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It is, a, it is a big game changer. I remember I was always tired, and then I got it done. Well, two things I got done. One, I got my nose fixed. I had a deviated septum most of my life. I've highly considered getting that fixed, too, based on what you said. Because you said it was very significant. Oh, my God. It changed everything. There were so many people that warned me about empty nose syndrome and, like, weird shit that might happen when you do it. What's that mean? Apparently, when you, uh, or is that, no, that's for a turbinant reduction. So for I me, had, I got turbinant reduction. Yeah. So that apparently, if it's like too dramatic, it gets to a point where you can't even like feel the inside of your nose or something. And it feels oh. like it's empty because all the stuff in there is just gone. And it, I can't imagine like what it's like because it's never happened to me, but people say it's 
the worst thing ever and it makes them suicidal from how what? it feels yeah there's some like real weird youtube videos about guys talking about how they got their deviated septum fixed and the turbinate reduction and their lives have been ruined whoa yeah yeah so it made me kind empty of think empty nose it. syndrome like you feel like there's a hole in the middle of your face like that kind of a deal maybe i, I don't know